So hello you wonderful citizen of the internet and welcome to a video about getting everything you want in your ideal goth girlfriend. And no, I'm not being sarcastic. I have seen a lot of people getting very pissed off about the goth girlfriend trend for a lot of quite justifiable reasons. But I have not yet seen anyone use it as a teaching moment because I do feel there is a way for these people lusting after their perfect goth girlfriend to get everything they want in a very consensual way and for everything to be great. Because I think the first thing you need to look into, if you are one of these people who is lusting after a goth girlfriend, the first thing you need to think about is why though? Like why are you so fascinated by the goth girlfriend thing? Why do you want one? And I think the answer is probably pretty obvious for most people, and that is the long-running stereotype that goth girls are incredibly kinky. Generally speaking, this is what people are after when they are not a part of the goth scene and they want a goth girlfriend. Really, it's code for I want a girl who is kinky and down for everything. And this is a really long-running stereotype. Like, if you've ever been a goth model, some of the things you are asked to do are really out of the box. Like I've had some very, very strange requests for modeling shoots back when I used to do it. You become very desensitized to sexual emails when you have had people asking you, will you do a bondage shoot with me where I can attach electrified clamps to your lips? And I don't mean these lips and then pleasure you while we're doing it. So you don't feel any pain. That's not a model you're looking for. That is an extremely professional and specialized sex worker you are after. No. Um, similarly, if you are a goth on a dating site, even if you say nothing about kink in your profile, you will be offered slaves and things like this. It's unfortunately something that just goes along with being on the goth scene is being completely misinterpreted by people as far as your sexual desires go. So returning to the people looking for goth girlfriends, if you are out there because you want this incredibly kinky girl, and I think this goth girlfriend thing has blown up recently, because obviously you've got the younger generations who have really, they have had like hardcore prawn in their face since they were very young. There, there are a lot of people who do think, you know, the minute a girl gives consent for sex, she is also giving consent for things like hard hair pulling, choking, spitting in the face, pearl necklaces, etc, etc. And that is not the case. Like, please ask for consent for these things. Do not just go in there and, and rough sex is something that, that needs its own form of consent. But obviously, you've got this generation who's been brought up on prom, but they've also been put into lockdown, their social skills have declined, their ability to mingle with girls has declined, and therefore, I think this has built this, this real kind of online culture of like looking at girls online, and there are, you know, goth is trendy again, so there are a lot of goth looking girls online. And I think that the two things have merged together, and it's kind of like, oh, okay, so I, you know, I tried to have the kind of sex I'm seeing in prom with like a normal girl, and it didn't go down so well. She slapped me and threw me out the room. But I'm seeing all these goth girls online. I bet they'd be down for that. That's where I think it's coming from. Um, so if you are one of these people of whatever age, whether I'm right or not in this theory, if you are lusting after a goth girl because you think she is going to be super kinky, I think the first thing you need to do is actually educate yourself on kink and realize that you are a bit kinky too. If you're into these things and these things are doing it for you, well done, congratulations, you're kinky too. Um, <laughs> which means it is now your job, and it will be your pleasure too, to educate yourself on kink. There are a lot of fantastic books out there. If we can get some suggestions in the comments for really good books on kink, that would be great. It's not my area of expertise as someone who is grey sexual and honestly doesn't have a vast interest in sexual activities. Because this, this is something that is, is clearly not known about the goth scene to outsiders, that yes, there is, there is a big overlap with BDSM and the goth scene, but increasingly more these days, there is also a big overlap with asexuality and the goth scene. So a lot of these goth girls you're lusting after and thinking they're super kinky, may not actually ever have sex with other people. There are all, all sorts of different varieties of asexuality. Some people have no sex with anyone. Some people only have sex with themselves. Some people have sex, but it's it's like very, very, very rare, the people they're attracted to. That's kind of the category I sit in. Um, so yeah, not all goth girls are up for it all the time or at all. 
But yeah, returning to the kink thing, educate yourself on kink, read some books. This is not going to be like dreary, dry reading. This is going to be titillating reading and you're going to enjoy it. Um, <laughs> And then obviously look for kink events in your city. Like I feel like the kink scene is something that has actually not died after the pandemic and lockdown. Like so much stuff has died in cities like nightlife and kind of socialization wise, but kink, typical humans, right? With their sex drives, kink is going nowhere. So like in Birmingham, there's the BBB, the Birmingham Bazaar Bazaar. And that's like a, a fetish market with fetish displays and kind of talk throughs. And you can meet a lot of cool people there. Obviously, if you are looking for someone to actually get kinky with, then something like a kink market, they're going to be great places to meet someone who is going to be down for experimenting with the things that you're into. Having someone with you who's a bit more experienced in those things is, is going to be like really ideal because they will show you the ropes quite literally. Um, I think that's going to be the way. And obviously, if, if you do decide at that point, okay, great, yeah, I've, I've got this knowledge on kink, I'm into kink, but I, I still I still really want like a gothy looking girlfriend who is into kink. Um, honestly, by then, I think you probably will have spotted a few already because, as I say, there is a huge crossover with the goth scene and the kink scene. Otherwise, obviously, you can always get yourself to a goth club. If you are near a major city, there is usually going to be one on, even if it's only once a month or something. However, at this point, when you are running into actual goth girls, please do remember everything I've said, which is that not all goth girls are actually going to be into kink. Just because they look like a dominatrix and dress like a dominatrix does not mean they are a dominatrix. Um, so please do, do not go up and approach them and immediately be like, I want to be your slave. Because apart from anything, they are going to have heard it like a thousand times before. If you're approaching a hot goth girl who looks like a dominatrix and you're like going, oh, please let me be your slave, you're not being original. They have heard it a lot of times before. Um, and it, you know, it might be something they're into, but I would say that is probably a rarity. Like if, if you're thinking about, about people who are actually dominant as in fully sexually dominant in their real life, not as in their job. So people who are dominatrixes for their job, um, that's kind of a whole different thing because money comes into it. People who are like fairly dominant and able to pull off the persona will often do it for money. But finding a truly sexually dominant woman apparently is fairly rare. Like most people who are sexually dominant do tend to be male, apparently, despite this stereotype that, um, you know, that dominatrixes are everywhere and men want to be spanked all the time. Actually, it can be quite hard, apparently, to find a genuinely sexually dominant woman who wants to be doing that all the time. I would say most women probably land in the switch category. So, you know, they're happy to play a bit of the dominant role every now and then, but they're also going to want to switch. Personally, I like that versatility um, in people. I think I think that versatility is way more fun, but I guess I say that as someone who's more kind of switch related myself, I guess. Um, so obviously you want, you want that versatility in your partner too. Uh, tangent, but... Um, yeah, so obviously not not all goth girls are going to be dominant, even though they look it. Um, if you're looking for someone who is submissive, similarly, not all goth girls are going to be into being ball gagged, whipped, tied up, all the rest of it. You, you may find that they are not into that stuff either. And if they are not into that stuff, and you heavily are, I think that is a relationship that you just need to, like, walk the fuck away from. I think, I think getting someone to be more dominant than their personality really is honestly is kind of a freeing experience and can be kind of positive for someone who's not that confident but treating someone as a submissive and you know tying them down strapping them down potentially even humiliating them all of that stuff if they're not into that that is just outright abuse as far as i'm concerned um so don't try and push someone into stuff they're not into sexually like I, you know i know if you're a bit experimental then trying to get your partner to be a bit more experimental is is kind of natural but you've you've got to really read the room and you've got to really read their body language and know what barriers not to push it past which is why there is there is so much talking and so much discussion 
required in BDSM and in kink. You need to know what is agreed, what is not agreed before you start. And obviously, if, if you are someone who has grown up watching prawn where everything is so spontaneous, you know, where like the pizza delivery guy comes and suddenly, you know, he's doing everything to her, it's getting rough as anything and no one's protesting and it's so spontaneous, there's no talking, there's no aftercare, there's no consent, there's no safe words, there's, there's nothing spoiling the fun, you know. That's not how it is in real life, generally speaking. Like, obviously, when you've been with someone for a long time and you do know what they like and things, obviously things are going to be able to get more spontaneous with this stuff. But in the opening stages of a relationship, you don't want to end up potentially dealing with legal ramifications because you thought Pron was real and you thought you could do all these things to someone without asking consent and you cannot. And that, uh, like, I get it. I, I get that, you know, when you haven't had sex or much sex, like, seeing all these things acted out in prawn, you are you are going to think, oh, wow, you know, pe people just go wild in the bedroom. This is normal. Um, but just, you've got to kind of have, a, a like, a sprinkling of common sense here with, like, things that are not done in normal life without asking consent. Like, you wouldn't normally go up to your girlfriend and grab her by the hair and drag her across the room in normal life without being like, hey, I'm, you know, do, do, you, do you mind if I do this? Uh, I'm doing like a prank for TikTok or something. You know, you, you don't normally do this thing. Similarly, you don't generally spit in someone you love's face without, you know, discussing it with them first. Just, just have a, you know, a sprinkle of common sense when it comes to things that, that are like need a bit of consent asking in the bedroom first. But generally speaking, if it is going to be painful, if it is potentially derogatory to the other person, if it is humiliating, degrading to the other person, potentially that you need consent for. And just because that person is a goth does not mean that it is going to be any different. Frankly, you're probably more likely to get a very, very violent reaction, counter reaction out of a goth if you do assume these things about them and you suddenly go hog wild in the bedroom and start punching them and slapping them and pissing on them and all the rest of it. They're going to get violent with you because they have had this assumption all their lives that they are into this. They've probably been put in this situation before, particularly if we're talking about a younger goth who has grown up with this generation of men doing this kind of thing and assuming this kind of thing. Uh they're not going to tolerate it lying down um there may be legal ramifications for you for so many reasons you know not least of all the fact you don't want to be traumatizing people when you're trying to have a nice time with them um you need to educate yourself on this stuff before you get into it um with anyone goth or not but yeah i, I do believe like this obviously for a lot of people this is going to be a passing fad this is going to be a bit of a oh you know i'm a young adult and i'm horny and I want to try everything in the bedroom once. You know, I think everyone has that stage. Everyone who has sex has that stage in younger adulthood. And obviously, like, if you're, you know, like in, in my situation when I was young, if you already have a goth partner who is also quite experimental, you do get to try out all of this stuff in a very loving, consensual, discuss it first, but try everything once kind of way. And that's that's fun. But if you're someone who's grown up with the current era, with lockdown, the pandemic, and you haven't had time to find these relationships and experiment with things naturally, and you've grown up with a diet of hardcore prawn, like teaching you weird things about normal sex, um, it's going to be a lot, a lot more of a jarring, weird, difficult, experimental period, I think. But you know, education is the key. And like I say, education, I know that's a boring word, but it's not going to be boring if you're, if you are genuinely a kinky person and this is going to be something that is going to grow with you as you grow up, like reading kink literature and reading all this stuff, it's going to be fun. It's going to be titillating. You're going to enjoy it. So delve into that, get to your nearest kink market or kink meetup or something. Again, go into the kink markets and stuff. I think you will also find that fun because there will be a lot of people wandering around looking like your ideal sexual partner. So it's going to, it's going to be a fun thing. And once you become a educated, consensual, abiding, kinky person, you too can add something beautiful to a relationship somewhere, maybe with a goth girl, and therefore everyone gets what they want. So hopefully, hopefully that's a useful video. I don't know. I'm going to shut up now because this is long and a waffle, but um, good luck on your kinky journey.
you strange little person. <laughs> I've run out of my pipe. <laughs>